Oh, come on, Velociraptor. Of all the characters that exist, why do I need to make a video about that dumb crocodile? Because... Son of a bitch. Disney products are popular. Popularity means views, and views mean subscribers, and subscribers mean money. But that reptile doesn't even have an official name. Manuel didn't have a surname, and he didn't have a problem rambling about him. And if I have to talk about a character from Disney's Peter Pan, why not Tinkerbell? She's practically their second mascot after Mickey Mouse. What the fuckery do you have to say about Tinkerbell? Well, I could make fun of the fact she has a large bum. I see. Tell you one thing, Jeffrey. Do you have a big bum? No. And are you a woman? Last time I checked, no. Then you aren't allowed to mock fat bitches, you sexist pig. If you're going to talk about Tinkerbell, why not make a trivia video? By the way, stop making trivia videos. Why are you telling me what I should and shouldn't be making videos of, Velociraptor? Are you now my internet agent or something? There's no time for explanations, Jeffrey. I've got something very important to say. Yes? Are you prepared for this? Yes. Pay attention. Did you just hang up on me? Yes. Well, that wasn't very nice. I know. Stuck up, tattooed, bearded bastard. Good day and welcome to another episode of This. This time I'll be talking about a character so awesome that he doesn't even need a name. Just like Lara Croft's farting butler and Scrooge McDiesel. It's time to venture into the Animal Kingdom again with another Disney character who played an integral part to the Peter Pan story, despite only taking up about two minutes of screen time. Those of you who know the tale of the boy who never yada yada will know that the crocodile is responsible for Captain Hook's hook after Peter Pan chopped off the pirate's hand and fed it to the water-dwelling reptile. Good clean family fun. And for those of you who don't know the story of the flying boy in green tights... <laughs> now this might come as a bit of a shock to you, but this wasn't an original story from the Walt Disney Company. The original theatre show was written by Scottish playwright James Matthew Barry in 1904, which you can learn more about in the movie Finding Neverland where he was played by Johnny Depp. I'd give Depp a solid 10 stars for his impression of a Scottish accent, but at no point in the trailer was he shown having a moustache, making Finding Neverland the most inaccurate piece of libelous filth ever. But let's get back to TikTok Croc. Because he liked the taste of Hook's hand, he now stalks the captain waiting for his chance to devour the rest of him. Luckily for the pirate, the crocodile somehow swallowed an alarm clock, so the distance of his presence is always known. Unluckily, the constant ticking has apparently taken its toll on Hook's mind, causing him to twitch almost as much as the croc raises his eyebrows to the beat. Just like Carr, who was a tad on the ginormous size, Hook's admirer is big enough to swallow the captain whole, but depending on what bit of physical comedy the shot contained, the animators kept mixing him from being big to average size to... Game over, Captain. Game over. <laughs> so sprinkle on a bit of pixie dust, think happy thoughts, and aim for the second star on the right, because this is the chronicles of TikTok Croc. He first appears shortly after Captain Hook and his faithful, soft-hearted shipmate Mr. Smee drop the old exposition bomb whilst discussing Hook's missing hand. That cursed beast like the taste of me so well, he's followed me ever since. But now when he's about, he warns you, as you might say.
The crocodile's mannerisms seem to have been modelled after a friendly dog, sitting up and begging for Hook to jump down from the ship, with his tail wagging back and forth. Though, as with his eyes, this is due to the ticking clock inside of him. Go on, go on, I'll be off with you, I'll say go away, go away, go away, out of here. A few scenes later, Peter Pan and one of the few leading women in the Disney universe who isn't a princess spot the villains who have captured a native redskin and are rowing her towards a nearby cove, followed of course by TikTok Croc. You'd better talk, my dear, for soon the tide will be in. Nope. He waits for the moment when the captain goofs and is hanging by a hook. Look, if I give you some laxatives allowing you to finally poop out that clock, will you stop trying to eat me? Excuse me, sir. Yes? Son of a bitch. After we see his stalking habits are not limited purely to the daytime, the crocodile is not seen again until the final battle between Peter and the Hook. Damn it! Bouncy, bouncy. My only regret is not replacing my hand with a chainsaw! Not again! And the crocodile chases those naughty pirates into the sunset. A slightly different ending to J.M. Barry's story, as in that, Hook was immediately gulped down by the croc as soon as Pan literally kicked him off the ship. Similar to the 2003 adaptation, only in that, Hook fell after the pixie dust allowing him to fly deteriorated because the Lost Boy shouted negative thoughts at him. Also similar to the film Hook, where TikTok manages to swallow the captain, despite the handicap of being a stuffed corpse. That was a very stupid moment from a very stupid movie. Besides any of the scenes between Hoffman, Hoskins, and Williams. Never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't. Get TikTok's main theme was the instrumental for the song Never Smile at a Crocodile which was intended to be sung at some point in the film, and although the lyrics were scrapped, the score wasn't. Most people who know the tune have no idea it was composed for Disney's Peter Pan, due to it having been covered by various people in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, such as the Paulette sisters, Rolf Harris, and Jerry Lewis. Never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't get friendly with a crocodile. Don't be taken in by his welcome grin. He's imagining how well you'd fit within his skin. In 2002, Disney spat out another of its direct to, at the time, VHS sequels, and gave us Return to Neverland. And I certainly hope you took as many screen caps of that as possible, because TikTok does not appear in the rest of the film. What? The character was replaced by an octopus, who is also after Captain Hook because he tastes like fish. Why did they choose to not have the crocodile in this? Why did they replace him with a bloody octopus? And why am I pretending to be surprised by this when I've known for over ten years he wasn't in the sequel? So yeah, Hook is now being stalked by an octopus for exactly the same reason. And it doesn't even service the plot in any way, other than he now has a predator who can climb aboard the ship and reach him from a distance. Oh, and the suckers on his tentacles pop like the sound of a ticking clock, 
Well, isn't that just- WHY?! At least Captain Hook gives a half-arsed acknowledgement of the character's absence. No sooner do I rid myself of that cursed crocodile and all this! Oh, there, there. Feel free to leave a humorous comment as to why you think the makers of this film chose to omit TikTok. But Hook shouldn't have bothered saying he escaped the crocodile, despite the fact that Jolly Roger has remained anchored at Neverland for years, because in 2011, our favourite crocodile became a recurring character on the children's television show Jake and the Neverland Pirates. It's a show about some children who are too cool for school, yo, and have taken to a life of stealing, murdering, and raping. Though Peter Pan is absent, Captain Hook and Mr. Smee aren't, making them the main obstacle for the youngsters and their quest for Neverland's hidden treasures. TikTok is somewhat of an ally to the children, because his presence is of course enough to scare away Hook, as is the octopus. Fuck the octopus! The crocs growls, moans and groans are provided by voice actor D. Bradley Baker, who we all know and love for voicing... Um, uh, what's his face? You know, the talking German fish on American Dad. Barry Ferguson? My name is Klaus Heisler. And lastly, though I'm sure Disney will be making some more Peter Pan related products in the years to come, the crocodile appeared in one of the several Tinkerbell and Friends movies, The Pirate Fairy. In that, we see him hatch from an egg and believe that Tink's friend Rosetta is its mother, just as J.M. Barry envisioned. Later, he accidentally swallows an alarm clock thrown by a pirate he was chasing. And we also see he began his quest to eat Captain Hook from a very young age. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Kitch saying, By pure coincidence to this video's subject matter, my twisted employer Nigel is allergic to the sound of alarm clocks. Just roll with it. That's right, Mr. Sturgeon. Bring us 57 pounds and 43 pence and a haggis flavoured pizza to the border by 3am this Thursday. If not, then we'll begin de-stuffing your precious teddy panda. What do you say to that? Oh, oh bugger you then! <coughs> Jeffrey! <coughs> Jeffrey, answer the phone! Jeffrey, I'm not paying to sit on your arse all day rambling to a camera in your bedroom. Who do you think you are, Russell Brand? You are so getting a face for a C4 for this. If you're a member of the armed forces or a concerned parent, I confess, my butler Jeffrey Kitch did it. Okay, Nigel. Now we're even for when you punched me in the Cockneys vs. Zombies video. <laughs> Nigel? Nigel, you okay? Speak to me! Speak to me! Oh my god! I've... I've killed my boss! I've... I've killed Nigel Handbasket! I don't even care, Jeffrey. I thought you hated Nigel. With him dead, you can do whatever you want. I shall be free to break rocks and have a solid ball attached to my ankle on a 99-year prison sentence!
should see him. Yeah. Hey guys, what are you doing? Nigel Basket Hands, I thought I accidentally killed you. <laughs> By the way, you fired Jeffrey for making me piss myself. What? <laughs> 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 but seriously, you have ten seconds to shit your pants. <laughs>